There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Merry Christmas. All things being equal, this is going to go up on Christmas Day. This is uh, Litmus, the 12 days of Litmus. I didn't become aware of Litmus until it started, and I was already knee-deep into Vlogmas, and I just couldn't take it on. But I have decided to do a brief version of the 12 days of Litmus and post it to you, hopefully Christmas Day, maybe. Maybe not. I'm mean, going to do my best. But so let's get started. I'm going to do all the prompts. This is a festive booktube phenomenon created, I think this is the first year, I don't remember it last year, by the wonderful Adrian and Dalton of Stripped Cover Lit. Put a link to their announcement video. I'm definitely planning to do it next year. Maybe instead of Vlogmas, Vlogmas is a vlog slogmas. It's a slog. Vlogmas is a slog, or as, a, as I like to call it, vlogmas. But anyway, I've enjoyed doing vlogmas too, but it's finished, or it will have been finished. It will be finished by the time you see this. So let, without further ado, and some of these questions make me uncomfortable, and he might enjoy seeing me squirm, and other questions, most of the questions I love. So I feel self-conscious when I'm asked to champion other booktubers because people get left out. I don't like that, but I'm just going to do my best. And I'm also not good about talking about channel goals or reading goals, but let's see how it goes, shall we? So the first prompt is going to make me, I'm squirming already, uh, Day, the first day of Litmus, the best booktube friend I made this year. Uh, I've made so many great friends. I would have to single out two the two lovely booktubers that I have done the most buddy reading with for the longest time this year, since very early in 2018. And that would that is Britta Bowler and Ange of Beyond the Pages. I have been buddy reading pretty much continuously with both of them for most of the year and have gotten to know them really well, and I adore them. So... That's uh, that's my answer to that question. But I have also done less, but uh, more than one buddy read with several others and feel like I'm getting really close to uh, many other booktubers, and I'm not going to name them because I'm going to forget people. But in terms of the most continuous, sustained friendship that I made this year, it's Britta and Ange. Love them! Uh, two, the best writer I read for the first time this year. To me, reading one book that I loved by a new writer doesn't count as uh, being a, the best writer I read. I'd need to have read at least two to say that it's a new favorite writer or something. So there's a, a ton of new-to-me writers that I've only read one book, and I'm not going to talk about those because knowing me, the next book of theirs that I read I will hate. But... <laughs> Um, so the one that does count is Elizabeth Taylor. In the summer, Mel and I read Mrs. Pelfrey at the Claremont, and I absolutely loved it. There's a joint review we did. I'll put the link in the show notes. And I am now just getting a good start on another, my second novel. I believe it was Elizabeth Taylor's third novel, A View of the Harbor. Really enjoying it. Now, Elizabeth Taylor lived from 1912 to 1975 and uh, deserves far, mu far more attention than she has gotten so far and I hope to be a small part of changing that. But Elizabeth Taylor, uh, the best writer I read for the first time this year. The third day of Litmus, the best book I read this year, hands down, it is Women Talking by Miriam Taves. Uh, note the correct pronunciation of her surname, Taves, boys and girls. This is just an absolutely stunning novel. I don't really know how to talk about it at 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, just a few days before I get on a plane <laughs> with a slight hangover. But it's based on a true story uh, about a group of women, uh, members of a fundamentalist Mennonite cult in a South American country, Bolivia or something. And... A, uh, a handful of rapists, men living in the compound with them, have had been sedating them with animal 
uh, anesthetic and raping them repeatedly in their sleep. And this is a fictionalized account of th that group of women meeting over two days to decide what to do. Leave, they don't speak the language of the country they live in. They've never been outside of their compound or almost never. They have no education. They can't read. They don't know no other life than this, but leave and start a new life somewhere else. Stay and fight or stay and just accept the status quo. Their rapists have are in prison, but the other men of the compound are away from, uh, I'm saying compound, it's not the right word, but away from their place. Uh, let's go with compound. I can't, my, I can't think of a better word, but uh, they're going to bail out the accused and bring them back into the fold and so this gives these women a chance to decide what to do it's absolutely stunning emotionally compelling it'll rip your heart out but also give you uh, a renewed faith in the human spirit loved it i've got a review this was a buddy read with britta i've got a review that i uh, turned out pretty well it's going to be published in america in april check out my review if you want more information this was my top read the best book I read this year. On the fourth day of Litmus, I'm going to tell you, I was supposed to tell you, so now I'm going to tell you, of the best poem I read this year. Didn't read much poetry this year. I think this year I read, what's his name? <laughs> the gay Vietnamese poet. Ocean Vuong. His debut collection of poetry is, he's my favorite poet. But I'm not going to talk about him, because I think even more than his poems... And I can't remember whether it was this year or last year I read that book, so excuse the fuzzy preparation, lack of preparation vibe of this 12 Days of Litmus video was about five or six weeks ago in The New Yorker. The poem is called Hammond B3 Organ Cistern by Gabriel Calvo Caressi. I'm going to put a link in the show notes. There's an audio version of her reading the poem. I actually had never got around to listening to her read it, but I read the poem. It just knocked me flat on the floor. I'll give you the first ten lines. The days I don't want to kill myself are extraordinary. Deep bass. All the people in the streets waiting for their high fives and leaping. I mean leaping when they see me. I am the sun-filled god of love or at least an optimistic undersecretary. There should be a word for it. The days you wake up and do not want to slit your throat. It's a wonderful life of poem. <laughs> Check it out. It's like, ah! uh, Because of that, I bought a book of her poetry. I think I might have taken it home to Canada to read on the plane or something. Stay tuned for an update on that. On the fifth day of Christmas, the best booktube video I watched this year. That was a tough one, but it also really wasn't tough. The best book to video I watched this year was Eric Carl Anderson's Bookshelf Tour 2018. It just filled me with joy. I told him that it's the kind of video that if I'm having a bad day and I need a, a, a pick-me-up, a bibliophiliac book maniacal pick-me-up, I will watch that video to feel better. Go watch it. You've probably already seen it, but if you haven't, you must go watch it right now. Stop watching this video and go watch that one. On the sixth day of Christmas, the quote of the year. Uh, this was a tough choice, and it's a little bit random, but it's still an exuberantly wonderful quote. It's from Michelle de Kresser's novel, The Life to Come, which to me wasn't ultimately a successful novel, but I did love the writing, and I absolutely adore this quote. I think you'll know why. Have a listen. She would go out to do some shopping and return with a bag of books, with which she would settle down at the kitchen table. In bad weather, whole weekends passed in the outrageous happiness of reading. On the seventh day of Litmus, the big thing I learned this year. Mm, I'm not much for learning, people. I guess, uh, as a reader, I didn't learn anything. I mean, I learned a lot of stuff, but not, not on any one big thing. In my personal life, and I'm not going to, don't worry, I'm not going to get too personal, but I learned that I have a lot to learn about 
being in a marriage, but I can do it, and I'm a better person for having entered into this thingamabob. It's going well. Uh, on the eighth day of Christmas, an idea or a theme or a thought or a literary something or other that really stuck in my craw. Now, I was interested when I heard Adrian and Dalton talk about this, because to me, something sticks in my craw. It means it bugs me or irritates me, but they seem to be using it more positively. So I'll go with the positive, and I'll, I didn't... Well, let, let, let's, let's look that up right now. Let's see if, if I'm talking nonsense. Little mini in other words here, right in the middle of the litmus video. Okay, well, I, I, I don't want to embarrass them, but according to dictionary.com, I'm right. It's something that causes considerable or abiding resentment or rankles. But I'm going to go with the positive meaning because that's what they what they're after. So let me... I'll do one of each. How's that? So, things that really uh, captivated me this year. Things, not books or or uh, uh, something like that. But I became, by the end of the year, I became deeply interested in point of view in a way that I hadn't been paying attention in a precise, focused way since I left academia. And it's come back into my consciousness and I'm starting to get interested in uh, how point of view shapes uh, narrative and shapes fiction. And uh, I did kind of a deep dive on the second person this year because I wanted to make a really profound, insightful video essay for you all about how and why and what the effect was of the Zimbabwean novelist Sisi Dangaremba. She made a choice after the first two books in her series of novels were written in first person that in her third novel, published this year in America, This Mournable Body, she switched to second person. And so I wanted to talk about why she, why she might have done that and what the effect was. The sad part was those books were awful, so I abandoned. <laughs> but I, I'm still interested in second person point of view. I read uh, Jay McInerney's novel, Is It the Story of My Life? I always get the I always get the novel mixed up, the title. Uh, no, Bright Lights, Big City is the one I read, and it's second-person point of view. And I want to read more and, you know, keep doing this thinking research and maybe have something, but i got to find some good fiction, and I'm sorry that series of novels from Africa was not it. But anyway, I also, for no coherent reason other than just following my nose during the Women in Translation readathon became have become deeply, deeply fascinated by Wales, the country, and Welsh literature. And so I have read a little bit at the end of the year and plan to read a whole bunch more next year. In terms of things that uh, stuck in my craw in, in the railway, <laughs> oh, God. sorry, Adrian Adult, and maybe there's another Maybe where you live, it has a positive meaning. But <laughs> anyway, I might have to edit all this out. But hype really sticks in my craw. And I am going to be more militant about avoiding overhyped books or really extremely hyped books in 2019. Because almost everyone I tried this year was a bail or absolutely sucked. So literary hype sticks in my craw. On the ninth day of Christmas, December 20, uh, brag a little bit and thank your community. The first half, uh, it's really not my style, but uh, I've grown a lot as a booktuber, uh, making more videos that, you know, match my personality. I liked what Eric said in his, uh, I don't remember which, t it was uh, maybe the, uh, postscript tag he said he'd kind of found his voice uh, maybe i'm you know made a few steps towards finding mine but made some in yeah that's uh, that's as much as you're going to get from me about bragging um thanking the community this is a wonderful community and i don't know where i would be without booktube i i really don't as a reader and as, and as a person there there was a hole in my life that it first started to get filled by going on to bookish social media like litzy and then bookish podcasts but then booktube has become the 
the radiant core of that uh, deep satisfaction and stimulation that I have as a reader, that it's not just me sitting by myself and reading, but it's actually flowing both ways and I absolutely love it. So I, I love you guys. The 10th day of Litmus. Some writers and booktubers you'd like to know better this year. I'm going to skip booktubers because I'm just self-conscious because the, the, the little bullied, pre, pre, precociously pre-gay boy that's still me is like, well, if you like me, I want to get to know you, but you probably all hate me. So but, but enough with that. I'd like to get to know all of you, okay? But much more comfortably, writers. Uh, this year... One of my top reads was Denton Welch's In Youth is Pleasure, which is this 1945 novel about a 15-year-old pre-gay boy. <laughs> Can you see why I loved it? Uh, and it just knocked my socks off. So it made me obsessed with him. I have acquired this collectible two-volume box set of his complete shorter short fiction and essays. And uh, I want to read a lot more by and about him in 2019 and forever at thereafter. And I love the synchronicity of my favorite writer, depending on which day you ask me, but most days I would say Barbara Pym. When I read her biography, she was a stalker. She stalked me, not in the creepy way. I mean, some people might find it creepy. I found it completely <laughs> Barbara Pimp, she would, when she was a university student and well into her other later life, she, when there was a man she was interested in, she would follow him around, follow, go stand outside his house, and look into his windows, and check him out in the, in the library of what she could find out about him. And she discovered Denton Welch after his death, because he died not many years after this was published. I think he died in about 1948, and she discovered him after that, and she stalked him from the grave in his grave like she went to where the place where he lived and the parks where he'd have picnics and this and that so i love that synchronicity because uh, the two of them are have become very important writers for me i had late this year i discovered the welsh british welsh obsessed british border writer margiad evans my buddy read this novella Country Dance from 1932 with Charlotte of Tired Mama Tries to Read and Ange of Beyond the Pages and it just was so fascinating. There's a review that has just gone up in the last few days I think. I'll put a link in the show notes. We're gonna buddy read another of her novels Turf of Turf or Stone and I want to read everything she's ever written and everything that's ever been written about her. She was fascinating and I you know, just based on one novel, I loved the the, the writing and, and the themes of uh, the theme of this this novel, and uh, I expect I will probably love this one too. I have six more uh, novels by Barbara Pym. These are all novels that she had written earlier in her life that were published either in the last year or two of her life and then posthumously. And there's six, uh, so I will. T it'll take me the year to read them because I don't like to read. You know, I'll, put, I'll finish one and then I'll wait a couple months to start another. So it'll take me 2019 to finish her oeuvre and then I'm immediately going to start again. But so I want I'd like to read even more about her. I read this novella by uh, Gugi Wationgo, Weep Not Child. It's his debut. It was a devastating read. I absolutely loved it. It's the best book I've ever read that knits social political stuff together with a really compelling fictional narrative and fully developed characters that, wait for it, I haven't used this phrase in this video, jump off the page. Powerful. I want to read absolutely everything else by him because of how much I loved this. My novellas in November uh, kudos uh, tied with this was Helen Garner's novel, The Spare Room. Uh, and I'm not going to I've said so much about it. There's a joint review. I'll put a link in. It was absolutely incredible. I want to read everything she's ever written. So those, just for a, a shorter list of, a much longer list of writers I would like to know better in 2019. The 11th day of Litmus, the 2018 Booktube MVP. I had to Google that. Something about sports. Most voluptuous player or something. No, most, I know what it stands for, but I... Um, this is difficult because there's so many booktubers I love, but I'm 
going with, it, there's really only one choice, Eric Carl Anderson. Uh, the consistency of the exuberant, passionate, fun, informative, addictive, infectious videos that he puts out about new books, new literary fiction, is just the highlight of booktube for me. So, and it certainly was in 2018. So, you go, girl. And today is the 12th day of Litmus, reading, writing, and booktube goals for 2019. And I don't really have any. I talked about wanting to finish Barbara Pym. Uh, from in my reading life, I don't have goals. I've even stopped setting a Goodreads target. I think it's just stupid and it just encourages kind of a compulsive competitive thing that I don't want to be a part of. I read a respectable number of books this year. I expect I will read a similar number of books next year, but who cares about that? I just follow my nose as a reader and as a booktuber, so I don't, I just want to get better as a reader, as a booktuber. Yeah, no, I don't have any. So, th but anyway, this was fabulous, guys. Uh, Adrian and Dalton, f a fantastic idea. And I will be participating uh, even more in Litmus next year if you decide to do it. And for all the rest of you, I don't get into the Christmas spirit. So I'm filming this on, I don't know, December 20th. So I'm definitely not in the Christmas spirit. I, I'm in the Scrooge phase of December. I hate everything about Christmas. Bye bye, boat. Christmas Eve and ending at noon on Boxing Day, December 26th, I get a little Christmassy. So I will try to simulate some of that and wish you all happy holidays. Thanks for watching. Oh.